Hey, this is Scott. Welcome to the XFED Homestead. Now comes the time in the year when gardening's long past and all the work has been completed for seeding and harvesting and cultivating and all the other things you do with your garden. But in the winter time is when I like to order seeds and get prepared for the next season. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hey folks, this is Scott and welcome to the XFED Homestead. Well, I'm up in the office now because it's winter time and it's time to do some garden planning. So that's what we're going to do today. I made a spreadsheet of my garden. It's a tool that I've been using for myself in order to plan for the next season and figure out what things I want to grow and what things I want to do away with. And to also figure out some of the new varieties of vegetables that I'd like to grow. Every year I try to do something different because that keeps gardening fun and interesting. So let's take a look at the garden plan for next year. Well, what you're going to see up on the screen now is an Excel spreadsheet that I did to delineate my garden layout. And so this is what my garden looks like practically to scale. It's just about right. You can see up here on the top left, I have my asparagus patch. And down from that, I have perennial flowers. This year I featured zinnias. And below that, I have a space that's just open. It's full of wood chips. And from there, I let the squash grow. And so they start in the garden and then they move out to that orangey space. You'll see I have the same kind of space over here on the right hand side of the garden as well with more perennial flowers, including some more zinnias and some hollyhocks that I planted as well. So what I'm trying to do is have my garden and then on the ends of it have flowers to draw bees and beneficial insects. And uh, plus it looks well, it looks pretty. So that's one of the reasons I like to have flowers at the end. You'll see here, I have my rows laid out. So my garden is about 75 feet long and it's about 26 or uh, 30 feet wide uh, from top to bottom in this picture. And beyond that, you'll see up here, higher up, I also have my strawberries, as well as my raspberry rows, and as well as a bunch of blueberry bushes. But if you go down to the garden down here, I have six rows, which is, uh, the rows are bisected by an alleyway here where I get to do my work. I just put this in this year because I thought it'd make it easier to get to each of the rows. So now that those six long rows are 25 foot rows or so. So if you follow me here, at the top of the garden, I had Valero carrots, which I made with pelleted seeds. I highly recommend the pelleted seeds. They work good for me. What I didn't do this year is plant them close enough. I gave them like an inch and a half of space when really I needed three quarters of an inch, maybe one inch of space between the pellets. These Valero carrots did really well. They were a total win. These were the carrots that came in second at the county fair. And the only reason I think they came in second is because number one, they were huge. They were much bigger than anything else that was in the fair. Uh, but they weren't of a uniform shape and size. Um, so that kind of uh, uh, held me back from winning first place. But you know, give me something to shoot for next year. So I'm definitely going to do Bolero carrots this year. The volunteer potatoes, that was one of my best epi episodes of videos. And a lot of people love watching the, the potato videos, but that volunteer row is gone now. So hopefully I won't have any more volunteers next year. As you go across the aisle here to the fennel, uh, fennel was a win because I've never grown it before. And it was something that I wanted to try each year, as I said, uh, before that uh, I try something new and this year fennel was it and I had a tough time with the fennel because the rabbits came in and devastated it when the shoots were about three or four inches high and they were just starting to take hold and the rabbits came and did away with them however they struggled they came back 
I kept the rabbits away from them, or more likely they found something else they'd rather eat than the fennel, and uh, they ended up doing very well. So I'm gonna plant more fennel next year. That's the plan. I also had carrots in that row, uh, which did fairly well, but uh, I'm gonna move all the carrots together next year. And the final thing in this top row was okra. And with the okra, this is something I've had going for about three years. A friend of ours gave me the seeds. She's a big gardener and said I should try it. I'd heard of okra, but what was very unexpected is that my wife loves it. She just absolutely loves okra. And I'll cook it for her with certain meals and saute it up and she, she just loves it. Haven't deep fried it yet, but I gotta give that a try in the future. So I'm gonna grow a little bit more okra. The Yukon gold potatoes were a win, but some of the larger ones had uh, a space in the center, a hollow part in the center. Not, not big, but it was hollow and sometimes was brown. So if you could let me know in the comments what that, that's all about. Yukon golds are still down in the basement. They're holding out well, they store well, and uh, I'm gonna grow about the same number, uh, one whole row of Yukon Golds. Uh, we still have buckets of them down in the basement, uh, and I've given some away to friends uh, who enjoy uh, getting some extra vegetables uh, from, the, from the homestead. So uh, I think just one row, one 25-foot row of Yukon Gold potatoes next year will do us. In this second row on the other side of the aisle, I planted nasturtiums. In fact, I planted them in a few different areas. It was good in this case because they're planted next to the zucchinis. So I think next year I'll probably do the same thing because once the zucchinis were gone, the nasturtiums moved in and kind of took over that real estate. So I was actually kind of happy with that. And plus the pretty flowers. But the reason that I planted them was because I was told and I have read in several areas that they have some properties that repel some detrimental insects. The, the Amish Roma potato, uh, tomatoes, I had the Sun Gold, those cherry tomatoes, as well as celebrities and early girl tomatoes. Now I canned some tomatoes this year, which was really my first foray into canning tomatoes on any scale at all and uh, I want to amp that up next year. We already by November went through all our canned tomatoes, so I really want to grow a lot more tomatoes next year. So I planted 16 tomato plants this year, maybe I'll do 30 next year and double the size of the tomatoes and see, see what that does because we love eating tomatoes with a lot of the dishes that we cook. So in this third row, there were Yukon Golds, which I already talked about, as well as the majority of that row was Russian fingerling potatoes. And the fingerling potatoes, they grew really well. Uh, I had a lot of big ones. I had even more smaller ones. Those were ones you could boil and mash, but we like, uh, we like dealing with the big potatoes. And so we we'll forego the Russian fingerling potatoes. Now, with regards to the cucumbers this year, had a really tough time with cucumbers. The squash bugs got to them after they started on the zucchini, and then they just kind of went downhill from there. I got a number of pickles, or excuse me, pickling cucumbers out of uh, uh, the six plants that I planted, but I put them in the fridge and kind of forgot about them for too long. And by the time I got back to pickle them, they weren't any good anymore. So complete waste, they ended up going in the compost pile and I felt terrible about that. I got more of the Market More cucumbers over here in the middle of the garden on the right. And uh, they did okay, but again, the squash bugs really went after them. And I made a mistake. I had in years past sprayed the squash bugs with a uh, peppermint spray with some uh, Dawn dishwashing soap in there. And I sprayed the leaves, but I sprayed the top of the leaves. And I knew somewhere back in my memory, I wasn't supposed to do that, but it was too late, I did it. 
and I sprayed the top and bottom of the leaves and you're only supposed to spray the bottom. So I kind of contributed to my own downfall with regards to the cucumbers, but you live and you learn. I'll come back next year and try to do a better job of it. Well, folks, it's getting late. I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow. I gotta go to bed and uh, we'll talk more about gardening in the morning. Hey folks, it's the next day and we can continue talking about the 2024 garden season and the garden planning that we're going to do for this year. We left off yesterday, halfway done through the garden. So now if you look on the screen here with me, the fourth row down and we started with lettuces and we had lettuce all over the garden. We had it over here, we had it over here. Uh, we had some spinach and romaine up here. I think we sprinkled some in with some succession plantings as well. But with lettuces, the issue with that is that I tend to plant too much at once. And then when it comes time to harvest all of that, there's way too much. And so I'm going to try this year to distribute my lettuce throughout the season and try to have it more in one area so I can see it without jumping back and forth all over the garden. So that's the plan for this year. As far as varieties go, I think we'll do more arugula next year. We didn't really have that this year. We'll certainly do more romaine and some head lettuce, maybe some bib lettuce as well, and uh, some mixed greens. Who knows? I'll take a look through the catalogs and see what I come up with. Now here in the fourth row, were onions and I planted 200 onion sets and the onions did fantastic. They were nicely spaced and they did great. Almost all of the onion sets came up and I still have them downstairs. It is now the beginning of February and uh, the onions are still downstairs and they're storing very well. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing next year. Continuing on, we had some zinnias, which really added a lot of beauty to the garden. Plus, like I mentioned before, with zinnias, you can just cut them every day and bring them into the house if you want. They, they are very prolific once they start growing. The golden beets, we love the golden beets. They don't stain like beets do. And my wife enjoys beet greens, so we're gonna keep going with golden beets. I could plant a few more of the beets this, this coming year. I'm going to lengthen this bed of golden beets when I get around to it. Over here, in the fifth row, we had cabbage and kale and broccoli and Brussels, mostly everything that I got from a local organic grower this year. And I got it all at once and I planted it all at once and it came up all at once. So again, I'm gonna have to try to learn to space things out or at least to harvest all at once and store it all at once and just be happy with that. So we'll see, especially broccoli. We can keep broccoli for a long time in the freezer after we blanch it. And we do like to eat a lot of broccoli, so that's fortunate. Uh, I think I'm going to really up the amount of broccoli that I grow this year. So probably a whole 25 foot row. And I think that will do as well. Brussels sprouts are a vegetable that I didn't have much luck with. So the Next year, I think I'm gonna give Brussels sprouts a break. I may need to find a new variety in the future, but I don't think we're gonna grow Brussels sprouts. I could use that square footage for something else. My bush beans were also devastated by rabbits. They didn't have a prayer. The rabbits came in just as they got three or four inches tall and just wiped them out right to the ground. I tried to plant them again, same thing happened. What did I expect? So next year when I have the fence in, I've always had good luck with bush beans. Next year we'll have bush beans. We don't Now the sweet potatoes didn't do so well this year, but I think part, that's partly because I got them late, I got them in the ground late, and they just didn't have the time. I'm gonna do my best to start growing slips right now with, in this week. I'm gonna start working on growing slips of my own from the potatoes that did grow last year because I, I know they're organic. I so know. 
sweet potatoes are definitely in the cards this year and will work a little harder to eliminate the pests from getting at them. I think that's what we can do this year. Spaghetti squash didn't have a chance this year. Between the squash bugs, the rabbits, the, uh, the voles that were in the garden, the spaghetti squash really never got off the ground. But I'm going to give spaghetti squash another chance this coming season, as well as the sugar pumpkins below it, which did very well. But I'll get to those in a moment. On the right hand side of the screen, you notice the squash bed has a place to grow. I did this on both sides of the garden and, and the sugar pumpkins definitely filled in this area and there was more room for the spaghetti squash, but like I said, they didn't end up growing so well. So I'm gonna continue to do that next year and plant the squash at the end of these rows. I'll just add some extra compost to those to sweeten up the soil there. And the final row down below, I had a great season with butternut squash. I don't think I'm gonna plant any more than I had last year. We still have some down in the basement. We've given a bunch away to, to friends. So that's going to be exactly the same as it was next year. I think we hit the sweet spot with that. And hopefully next year, I won't forget to enter my squash into the fair. It got dark and I apparently stepped right over the squash while I was picking for vegetables to enter into the fair. So next year, I hope will be my year. Celery was something that was new for me this year and it, it did okay. I need to pay more attention to it and pick it more quickly. I tended to wait a little. I wasn't sure if it had reached its growth potential because it was my first year with celery, but it ended up getting kind of woody. So I, I may give it a shot next year. And kale is a perennial favorite here at home. My wife loves kale, really enjoys it, loves it with breakfast, loves it steamed, loves it sauteed. So we cooked a lot of kale this year and the kale plants, they grow and they just keep coming and they just keep getting better. Even after a frost, they, they're fantastic. So we're definitely keeping kale. We've had good luck with that in seasons past and I hope to continue having good luck with that in the future. Well, lettuce and carrots and beets, and uh, we're gonna combine those, uh, these three vegetables here into other rows. Uh, I spread them out as I was doing succession planning, or I think I'm gonna do a little better with my row planting and planning for row planting this season. And the sugar pumpkins came out great. My wife, froze a lot of the pumpkins that we, we got. Um, she scooped out the, baked them, scooped out the flesh, got rid of the seeds, and I kept those seeds for this season. But she put them in jars and put them in the freezer, which was the easiest way to store them. But they did very well, much better than the spaghetti squash, certainly. Uh, but overall with squashes, I had pretty good luck this year. So I was very pleased with that. Based on all this information that I've gathered over last season, what am I going to do differently next season? Well, the number one thing that I'm going to do is build a fence again all the way around my garden and make sure that it's rabbit proof. I'm going to build something that hopefully I can take the lawnmower right up to the edge of it so I don't have to weed whack the garden every single time I mow the lawn. So right now I have four by fours on the outside of the lawn and if I can get those down a little bit lower, I can skim right over them. Otherwise, I'm gonna be stuck weed whacking every summer. So that's a maintenance issue, but also I can put the fence right to that wood and that would uh, eliminate the rabbits from getting get through gaps in the fence, I would hope. The other thing that I'm going to do differently is I'm gonna make a lot more tomatoes. I, I enjoyed canning this year. We enjoyed having those tomatoes hot canned in the basement, in our pantry down there. So we've already blown through them. So I need a lot more tomatoes next year. And the third thing was that I have to do a better job at succession planning. So when 
one lettuce dies or I use it up, I have to get into the habit of planting new stuff right away or having it in the house already started. So I'll have to work out a system for doing that rather than just having a lot of lettuce coming at once and then not having enough in over the next month. So that's something I'm going to work on this year. And I think those three things are a reasonable goal to accomplish. So based on all of that, how am I going to rearrange the garden and plan it out for next year? Let me show you how I'm going to do that on the screen. First, we'll get rid of vegetables like the volunteer potatoes. Hopefully those won't be coming back so I can delete those. The Russian fingerling potatoes, I said I'm not going to grow next year. So we won't grow those next year. And we had too many Yukon Golds, so I won't grow those. And the Brussels sprouts, those are going to go away as well. So I freed up some space for myself. So now what I want to do is kind of move everything that's up top down a row in order to rotate it through the garden. So carrots won't be back in this location for one, two, three, for five more years before they come back to this location. So that's, that's my plan. And it won't work in every single case. However, I, I do want to get like vegetables with like vegetables. So lettuces will go with the spinach, we'll go with the romaine and the head lettuce, the brassicas, the kale, broccoli, and cabbage will all go together. Um, in one row so that I can rotate different families of vegetables every year as well. So in this case, I said I'm going to have more carrots. Let's take the potatoes and move those down a row. Let's take the carrots and move those down a row. And I'm going to increase the amount of carrots that I plant. Likewise, all these brassicas, I can move down a row. Now, I did have squash on both ends here, so I'm gonna keep those because they grow into the squash growth space. That's one exception that I'll make. But I can take broccoli and, let me get rid of lettuce. Here and here, cabbages. We'll go here. Those will have to rotate back up top. Grew too much kale this year, so I'll get rid of that. And I'll increase the amount of broccoli that I have. And decrease the amount of celery that I have. I'll just grow a couple celery plants. And the cabbage, I may find that back here. Let me see, lettuces, onions. We'll hold that there for now. Now, Carrots, I already grew too many, so those, beets, here's an extra beet. I'm gonna increase the size of the beets. The lettuce, we'll have to find a place for the lettuces. In fact, I'll just make one area. Of lettuce. So now, I'll bring the bush beans down, but I think I want to put the sweet potatoes someplace else. Maybe we can do something like this. The spaghetti squash, I'm going to flip these. I'll put the spaghetti squash on the south side, which is the left. I'll put the butternut squash over here where the sugar pumpkins were and switch those. That seems like it'll work. 
And we'll need a place just for lettuces. So I think over here we'll do, I'll put this out of the way. So spinach and romaine go over here. Our lettuce can go over here. And I'll compare this to the garden that I had previously to ensure that I've rotated things well. And the pickling cukes, we can put down a row. Maybe I'll take these down to another row. These tomatoes, we're going to make more of them. So we can bring the okra down another row. We're going to grow more okra. The carrots are on the other side. And we're going to grow more fennel. Maybe we can put some nasturtiums up here. So I think I've rotated everything. And I have some extra space that I'm going to have to think about. I may increase the number of bush beans that we had. We've got some golden beets to do as well. Let's put those here. And where's our broccoli? Celery, kale. Maybe we can put some cabbage up top with the rest of the brassicas. And I may grow even more broccoli, so maybe I can put the kale over here. We really like broccoli, so I'm thinking maybe we do something like this. And I have broccoli and cabbage and kale and celery. I put those under the white row covers, so I can just have a row cover going here and over here. So that seems to make some sense. So I think that's the plan for next year. We'll lay it out kind of like this, and I feel good about this because it lets me know how many square feet, since this garden map is to scale, it lets me know how many feet of broccoli I need to plant or carrots, which will let me know how many seeds I need to buy, if I need to buy more than usual, or how many plants I need to buy at my local grower. So I'm pretty pleased with this. I'll tweak this a little bit and go through the seed catalog with my wife some more to see if there's some brands that she may want to get. I know I may grow another row of potatoes, um, so I haven't figured that in yet. So I have the sweet potatoes, the Yukon Golds, I had talked about doing the Caribou and the Purple Viking, so I've got to work that out. I've got some space to work with here. So I'll tweak it a little bit, but that is basically it for this next growing season. So I'm pretty pleased with this garden planning process. So I hope this gave you an idea how you can garden and plan your own garden experience. Whether it's a big garden or a small garden, you can use the same tools that I did and kind of think it out in the same fashion. Hopefully it helps you out and hopefully we'll all have a great growing season. This is Scott at the XFed Homestead. See you next time.